genius. Thank you much. Okay. All right, let's run through these. Um, so we did basically one through five and six and seven are done the same way. Um, so remember, there's a few steps to these. Label. Y1. Or you might have a slope. You have a y-intercept that's zero, comma, whatever the v-value is. Okay, you got to label them. You got to plug them into. Uh, if you have to find the slope, you plug into the slope equation. If you already know the slope, then you skip to skip step three. And then sometimes they might want you to take it all the way to step four. Okay, so that's the long and the short of doing these. Okay, identifying what you have. You have two points given. Two points, find the slope. The y-intercept is also a point, so realize that's a point. The slope is your m value every time you plug into the equation. Okay? So, problem number eight. They give us a slope of this. They give us a point of this. So do I have to find the slope? No, it's already found for us. So no slope equation is needed, but you can plug into this equation. x1, y1, plug on in. And it just said, I believe, it said find the equation of the line of passage. So you have found the line or the equation. Okay? Um, it didn't say which specific equation to find. So if you found this equation, or if you took it one step further, distributing the two-fifths over the parentheses and subtracting one, both of those answers would be correct. But I'll just leave it there. Um, problem number nine, though, says find the line that's parallel. And that's parallel to the line. It has a y-intercept which is b of negative 9. So that means, OK? So parallel lines have the same what? Slope. OK? So if I'm looking for a line parallel, that means that this is going to have a slope of 2 fifths. OK? So we want it parallel to that. Then I'm going to use my y-intercept into this equation. That's x1, y1. And just plug on in. And again, it just said find the equation. That's the equation. That equation is parallel to the previous equation. That equation also contains the point 0, comma, negative 9. Ten says find the equation that's perpendicular and goes to the point four four. So we want the perpendicular slope. So if the parallel slope is two fifths, anyone know what the perpendicular slope is? So if you have a slope that is a over b, where a and b represent any number, the perpendicular slope. The term for uh, the sign for perpendicular is the upside down t. <coughs> is the opposite sign reciprocal? So if it's positive, the perpendicular slope is negative. If it's negative, the perpendicular slope is positive. Okay. So if the parallel slope is this, what is the perpendicular slope to it? By what I just said. There you go. Negative five over two. Okay. Well, I can have the negative on top, or I can have the negative on bottom, or I can have it right in the middle. So as long as it's someplace. And then also we want it to contain the point 4, 4. And again, it just says find the equation. So I'm going to use this. Y minus Y1 equals M times the quantity X minus X1. OK? This is X1, Y1. Where's that? It's 4 and 4. I can't write this here. So I have Y minus 4 is equal to negative 5 over 2. 
times x minus 4. That equation is perpendicular to our given equation. That equation also, if we draft the line, would contain a point 4, comma 4. Okay? And again, it said, just says find the equation. That's the equation. I'm using point slope. I'm choosing not to take it further to use slope intercept form because it just gives me the broad spectrum saying, hey, find the equation. We did. And if a teacher marks you wrong on a problem that says find the equation and you give the equation and it's not the form that the teacher wanted, push them on it a little bit. Say, you said find the equation. I found the equation. Yeah, but I wanted it in this form. It doesn't say that, though. Be specific. I mean, if the teacher doesn't give you the specific instructions, take the least amount to get to that equation. Okay, so that's problems 8, 9, and 10 all in one. On one board. Okay, problem 11. Problem 11 says, write the equation in point-slope form. So they want this in point-slope. And it contains these points. Okay, do we know the slope? Do we know the slope? No. So let's find the slope first. So x1, y1, x2, y2. F equals, <coughs> excuse me, so y2 over x. There we go. Again, I'm writing it down because we need to know it. So negative 27 minus 8 over negative 2 minus 3. That's negative 35 over negative 5. Negative over negative is positive. This comes out to 7. Because 35 over 5 is 5 over, or 7 over 1. 7 over 1 is 7. So we want to use the point slope equation. Point slope equation is this. And then we'll plug in this. We already have it labeled x1, y1, so let's use it. That's the equation in point slope form that contains those two points. Whoa, hey. <laughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> and then use your equation to determine the value of x when y equals 1. What does that next part mean? We want to figure out the value of x when we know that this is what? 1. So that's going to be 1 minus 8 equals 7 times x minus 3. Distribute over here and then do this math. Is that okay so far? Second week of class, add 21 to both sides. 5 by 7. So x is equal to 2. Find the value of y when x is equal to 5. So now we're looking for this when we know this is 5. So I'm going to go y minus 8 equals 7 times 5 minus 3. 5 minus 3 is 2 times 7 is 14. Add 8. 22. Good? All right. Harold rides bike to school. 10 minutes after he's left, he was 11 miles from school. 20 minutes after he left, he was 9 miles from school. Write an equation in function form that models Harold's distance from school as a function time since he left his house in minutes. Can't translate the information on the coordinate plane. Yeah, I hate to do that. All right, let's figure out a little Harold here. All right. So this is, we'll call this 10 minutes and 11 miles. By the one, I'm going to call 20 minutes, 9 miles. Which value up there am I going to call x? Yeah, the minutes. And y would be miles. How do I know that? That's how I labeled it. x comma y, minutes comma miles. 
Okay? So, let's go through and find it, and then we'll label what we know. So, I'll find the slope first. So, I get 9. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. 9 minus 11, 20 minus 10. 9 minus 11 is negative 2 over 10, which is negative 1 fifth. Okay, hang on. I'm going to write the equation. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, um, let's write the equation. So we know that to be x1, y1. Let's plug it in. I think we might be okay leaving it like that. It says write the linear equation in function form. I, sounds good. That models Harold's distance from school as a function of time. So remember the x is the time and the y is the miles. Oh, what is the y-intercept and what does it represent in this problem? Oh, okay. So if it's looking for the y-intercept, how should I have it solved? What's that? Slope intercept form, good. All right, so I'm going to distribute this here and here. It's going to be y minus 11 equals negative 1 fifth x plus, what's a fifth of 10? 2. Good. And then add 11. So I'm going to get y is equal to negative 1 fifth x plus 13. What does the y-intercept mean in the context of this problem? Map. What? A map. a map. I like it. I like your thinking. So if that's the y-intercept, that means this point exists. What is x represented in our problem? What is x represented in our problem? How do we label x? What label? The X. What label? What's up above in blue? What does it represent? Oh, uh, Minutes. What does Y intercept blue represent? Miles. Miles. So, what does the Y intercept mean in this problem? Kruger, get out of here, dudes. 13 miles. What about 13 miles? What does 13 miles mean in the context of this problem? Let me read it again. Harold rides his bike to school. So we assume he's leaving from where? Home. Home. What do you think? Max? It is a line intercept. What does it mean in the context of this problem? Yeah. How far he lives from school. How far he lives from school, exactly. Okay? So I heard a couple of really great things. I heard it's a map. So if this is 0, 13. <clears throat> what would the x-intercept represent? Where the school is. Huh? Would be the amount of time. Yeah. So if it gets to here, this is where school is at. This is time down here. This is distance right here. So once he gets to the x-intercept, we know how much time it took him to get to school. How do you know when you get to school? When there's zero miles left. Make sense? Okay, so what is the y intercept? What is the y intercept? Well, 0, 13, and what does it represent in the context of this problem? When he's still at home, he still has 13 miles to go to get to school. What does the x intercept and what does it represent in the context of the problem? The x intercept is when he has no miles left to travel, so he has gotten to school, and it's going to tell it, so our x Act, or x coordinate will tell us how much time it took to get there, and then the y or the y component of the x axis is that we got to school. What is the slope? And what does it mean in the context of this problem? The slope is the change in the y values over the change in the x values. The y value is what? Look above. Miles. Miles. What's the x value? 
minutes. So, for every one mile closer that Harold gets to school, that's another five minutes of time that's taking place, assuming that he's riding at a constant rate. We're not taking into account traffic lights or anything like that. We're just pretending it's a straight shot. He's not changing the speed. He's just traveling. Okay? So every one mile closer he gets to school, five minutes of time has taken place. What is the slope and what does it represent? Oh, we just talked about it. how far from school is he after riding 30 minutes? So after he's ridden 30 minutes, how close is he to school? So which value is minutes? Which value is minutes? X or Y? X. Okay. So I'm going to take 30. I'm going to plug it in right here. So negative 1 fifth of 30 is negative 6 plus 13. So he is 7 miles. So after 30 minutes of riding his bike, he's 7 miles away. Good deal. After how many minutes will he be 6 miles from school? When will he be 6 miles from school? Which value is miles? X or Y? It's Y. So again, I'll plug in right here for Y. I get 6 equals negative 1 fifth X, where X represents time, plus 13. Subtract 13, multiply each side by negative 5, or negative 5 over 1. So 35. So 35 minutes has taken place to where he is still 6 miles. 6 miles from the school. Cool. And then 13 and 14 are reviews. So this is. This is a little deeper thinking of, of linear equations. And it's really going through and labeling it and staying confident with your labels. Yo. That is me, and she is not here. Thanks, man. Um, for number 13, we have this. And number 14, we have this. Two different problems, two different linear equations. They want them both graphed. So the first problem, we're going to grab that first. So that's negative 4. So that's the point 0, negative 4. The slope is 2 thirds. So from there, I'm going to go up 2 over 3. Second problem, it's not solved for y. It's in standard form. Standard form finds us what when we start graphing? x and y. Okay? Let's be official. We'll use the cover method. 2 times x equals 8. So what's x equal to? 4. So that's the point 4 comma 0. 4 times y equals 8. What's y equal to? 2. That's my y-intercept. Connect the dots. Looks like that. In dirt and mud. Okay. All right, let's review a few concepts pretty quick. Okay. If I give you two points, you need to label x1, y1, x2, y2, find the slope. And then plug into the point slope form. Sometimes you need to take it to this form. So sometimes slope intercept, sometimes point slope. If I say to you, find the equation, which one are you going to give me? You want to do more work or less work? Less. So you're going to find point slope. Okay? Parallel slopes are equal. So 
So if you had one slope that's A over B, the parallel slope to it is also going to be what? A over B. So they're always the same. Perpendicular slopes are opposite sine reciprocals. Okay, so if I have a slope of A over B, what does my perpendicular slope have to be? Negative B over A. Okay, opposite sine reciprocal. Reciprocal means flip it over. What if, if I have a slope of 3, what is the parallel slope to 3? Three? 3. What's the perpendicular slope to 3? Negative 1 third. Good. If I have a slope of 0, what's the parallel slope to 0? Zero? 0. Great question now. What's the perpendicular slope to 0? 0 over 0, which is what? No. No. Cosine infinity. Cosine negative infinity. Non existent, undefined. Good. Okay? Undefined. So, well, undefined in infinity. You, you can't really define infinity. Okay? So, perpendicular slope to something that's 0 is has an undefined slope. If you have something that has an undefined slope, the perpendicular to that would be zero. Okay, so, so if I have x is equal to three, this has an undefined slope. Okay, it's a vertical line through three, like that. Okay, if I have y is equal to 2, this has a slope that is 0. So I count 1, 2, and it looks like this. Okay, so horizontal line has a slope of 0. The perpendicular line to a horizontal line is a vertical line, and a vertical line has a slope that is undefined, and flip-flop of that. All right, I'm going to give you the rest of the time to work on worksheet 10A. It is all due tomorrow, end of class. Okay, so it's page 94, page 95, page 96. Oh my lord. But when I say it's due tomorrow, end of class, what does that probably mean that we're going to do tomorrow in class? Probably work on it in class. Now, you have 22 minutes. Start it now. If you need to take a picture of your friends, please take a picture of it and write it in your own notebook. Okay? So, worksheet 10A will be due tomorrow, end of class. You have 22 minutes to start on it now. I'm going to wander around the room and help you, okay?